we're sitting here. All right. We are ready to begin. Can you can you hear out there on the patio? R wave if you can hear me. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Let's let's begin. I'm good morning all of you on this beautiful day in Newport Beach. It's a perfect day to talk about airports. <laughs> And that's what we're here for to do, and thank you. I'm Diane Dixon, mayor of Newport Beach, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm delighted to uh, welcome our supervisor, Michelle Steele, who has uh, generously hosted this meeting today. And we'll get into the particulars, but first we have to do the most important uh, item on our, our agenda this morning is do the Pledge of Allegiance. So we have veteran Dave Miller, a resident of Newport Beach, former U.S. Navy. I guess you're always a new uh, U.S. Navy. And will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Gentlemen, remove your uh, hats, please, and face the flag in the, on the hill out here. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> well, good morning and welcome all of you for joining us today. Uh, and I think everybody, is anybody in the council chambers? Everybody is here in this room or on the patio, so I'm glad we have everyone with a, a prime view. Welcome, Supervisor Steele, and thank you for conceiving the idea of a joint town hall, and it's a perfect time to update Newport Beach residents on current activities at John Wayne Airport. Joining us this morning are Council Members Brad Avery, Joy Brenner, Kevin Muldoon, and the chair of our aviation committee, Mr. Councilman Jeff Herdman, is all here in the front row. City manager Grace Leung, city attorney Aaron Harv, and member of our planning commission and the county's aviation commission, Lee Lowry. Thank you all for being here. We have two presentations by John Wayne Airport staff members, and the supervisor will be introducing them shortly. And just a little bit of uh, housekeeping at the front end. There will be a question. There will be question and answer periods too after each presentation, and there are cards available for you to write your question or statement for the Q and a, Q and a segments. And so the person who's walking around with the cards, is, where is she? So if you need a card, where it, am I looking at her? I don't see the person with the cards. Does everybody have a card? Oh, maybe you all have cards. All right, uh, we'll be sure we'll get you a card. Um, and then what we'll do with the cards is uh, the supervisor and I are sitting up here and we'll be reviewing the cards. Really the purpose of the cards is because of the size of the crowd. We want to make sure that we get all the questions answered and uh, make sure we don't have duplicates. So we just want to get uh, have an opportunity in this period of time to answer all the questions. Uh, for the last question and answer session, we will field your questions from the cards, and if time permits, we will have a few live comments. We'll bring up the microphones and we'll have some live comments for comments only, uh, right before noon, before the conclusion of the meeting. And at that time, we'll ask everyone to stand in line and come forward. I want to just step back and provide some context for our discussions this morning. I, assure, I can assure you that mitigating the impacts of John Wayne Airport's operations and preserving the 1985 settlement agreement and its protections remain a top priority for the city of Newport Beach. We have a team of council members and staff and consultants working closely with us and the community on a number of these initiatives on all fronts. And you can uh, read about all of our efforts in the handouts that we provided. Uh, the first one, this blue one is Newport Beach and John Wayne Airport provides an excellent summary of all the work that's been done by prior councils working with and community groups working with the County of Orange 
for the last 40 plus years. So it really provides a lot of good background for some of you who may not be familiar with the history. And then the second document is the green head sheet, and that is the specific reason why we're here today on the General Aviation Improvement Program, also called GAIP. So this document explains why our city council, the Newport Beach City Council, unanimously voted to support Project Alternative 3 that's in the uh, draft environmental impact report that is going before the Board of Supervisors at the end of this month. And we are here today to talk about the General Aviation Improvement Program. And we expect, uh, because the county will be taking action, uh, the board will before the end of the month, on the EIR. I want to frame today's discussion on some key economic facts which are uh, important for the people of Newport Beach to know how we're communicating the value of Newport Beach. We realize, we really do realize that there are important economic benefits associated with having an airport in Orange County. However, Newport Beach is also a major contributor to the county economy. In fact, Newport Beach is a major economic engine of Orange County. We want to preserve and protect the qualities of our lives that contribute to the economic value of our city and to the county and to protect this economic engine. Some key facts, Newport Beach is ranked about 11th of the 34 cities in terms of population, but we are ranked much higher when you look at the economic indicators. The city's assessed valuation of residential and commercial property is the second highest in Orange County. We deliver approximately $360 million per year to the county, and those are two th 2017 numbers, so it's clearly higher. Our city generates about $35 million in sales taxes, ranking seventh in the county. Newport Beach generates the second highest amount of transient occupancy tax to the county, just behind Anaheim. And Newport Beach has the largest per capita income in the state. We may be small on population, but we are a mighty group of people who want to protect the quality of life and the economic value that Newport Beach provides to the County of Orange and to the state of California. We, we would not have those numbers and we would not be an important asset to the county and the state if Newport Beach weren't a desirable place to live, do, visit and do business and to visit. Preserving the quality of life in Newport Beach is important to Newport Beach and it's important for Orange County. The county knows that Newport Beach has concerns about the growth of impacts from John Wayne Airport operations. We've been at this and the community groups before me have been at this for 40 years as I mentioned. Just some reminders of who does what in this whole operation. The county owns and operates the airport. The FAA controls where the planes fly and the flight paths they follow. The federal government controls the airspace. The 1985 settlement agreement limits total passengers and aircraft noise, establishes noise limits, and provides the all-important curfew. These are unique limitations, unique in the country. No other airport in the country operates under these caps, and Congress acted in 1992 to prohibit any other such local jurisdictions to impose limits on airports. Our agreement was grandfathered, and only because of the cooperation of the county and our continued support and working with our supervisor, Michelle Seal, does it remain in place today. So it's really important we protect them. Today, the supervisor and the airport staff are here to give us information, answer your questions, and listen to comments. They know this is a tough subject in our city, and they came anyway. <laughs> I realize that some of you are, there's a range of understanding and information that some of you are longtime uh, activists involved in this issue. Some of you are maybe perhaps new residents to the city. So these documents I referred to earlier can give you some historical perspective, and, but we will go through some of the current information so everyone is, is informed. I do want to correct uh, one bit of uh, misinformation that's circulating in our community in two points. The general aviation project that we're here today to talk about is not about expanding the physical size of the airport. It could, however, the proposal at hand is to increase corporate jet traffic over Newport Beach. So we're not talking about runway expansion or anything like that. This is simply general aviation. And there is a curfew for general aviation. It works differently than for the commercial carriers, and that'll be explained uh, this morning. 
Okay, I ask that we all do our best to be, make this as productive as, pos as possible. You've all come out on a Saturday morning on a beautiful day, and so let's get important work done. So I want to just go over some housekeeping items. Let's refrain from talking over, or clapping, or booing. In fact, we have limited time, so we don't want to use up the time for that. So what we do at our city council meetings when there's a reason to clap and we ask our audience members, our public, to just wave their hands like we did a few moments ago, if you could hear me. So that kind of saves the time. All those little seconds add up and we want to make sure we get a lot done in the next two hours. Please write your question and comment on the cards. Is the person who's handing out the cards, has she reappeared? I just want to be sure that we make sure we get those cards out. Supervisor Steele and I will sit up here and review your questions. And remember today, it's only general aviation and the proposed expansion of the flights of general aviation that we're talking about. Please show respect for your fellow speakers and residents in the room. And also, we have the city staff, uh, we have these green sign up cards that you can place various buckets, I understand, are around. And this is so you, your name and email address is included in our communication distribution so you can remain in contact with us. So I think that's it for now. I will turn it over to our supervisor, Michelle Steele. Thank you so much for making all this possible and bringing us all together on a beautiful day and for all you do for the people of Newport Beach. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, city council members and commissioners. And thank you for coming out on Saturday. And you know, this is a very important issue for the Newport Beach, and we love to hear your concerns. That's why we are here. But let me make it very clear. There's no expansion. I see a lot of signs here, no expansion. Listen to our concerns. That's why we are here. So, you know, you can just fill out your cards, and then you have any questions, because I know that, you know, when I'm hearing, there's a lot of duplicate questions coming in, so we try to be efficient. We have two hours. and. We're going to go through that. And at the same time that, you know, there's a lot of gossips going around that, you know, GAIP, that we are actually, um, you know, they try to go out after how many years that they were like a month to month uh, uh, the contract. And we try to go out and we really have to do ER report and it has to come down. So there's just nothing about the expansion. So first thing of this year, actually, um, city council member or Herdman and Milton and uh, Mayor Dixon and Grace, uh, your city manager, came to my office and they said, you know, no expansion. I said, there's no expansion. So bottom line is there's no expansion. I want to make it very clear from that on. Presentation. Um, I have to. Uh, read this one because a sequel process, this project started in 2017 because, you know, we tried to go out request for a proposal, but, you know, before you do that and uh, at the airport, you always go out. So draft EIR was released for public comment in September 2018. The airport hosted a public hearing on the draft EIR on September 26, 2018, provide additional opportunity for comments and questions. Under the state law, the county is required to evaluate and respond to the more than 300 environmental comments it's received on the draft EIR within 60 day public review period and that was closed in November. So the airport is in process of finalizing its written responses to all comments received during the public review period and the public meeting, and I expect the airport provide a notice, uh, notice of availability of the responses to comments before end of next week, and it's gonna be available online for all of you to see it. And we have, actually, it's not just the airport, but I have my staff, about six of them here, that can you just raise hand? It's gonna take too much time that and I think they're standing right there. So you have more questions later on, then you know what, we're gonna stay behind so you can ask those questions. And then I have all the airport staff here that Barry, CEO, and Nick, and Larry, and everybody sitting in front. 
And then actually FAA uh, airport's manager, David Cushing, is showing up. He's not going to speak today, but he's going to listen to all of your concerns. So FAA came out. So thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate it. I'm going to promise you just only before we start that as long as I'm your su supervisor, they, there will be no expansion of John Wayne Airport. And I do everything within my authority as a supervisor to have your concerns addressed. And I will only support the project that has the least impact on residents. This is uh, my promise. And you know what? Let's just go through that exactly what we are going through, what it's been done, and what we are doing it. And you're going to hear from our um, airport staff. I'm going to bring uh, Nick Gaskins out. So he's going to come out, and he's going to go through the you know what, every time after the presentation, we're going to do Q&A or concerns that we're going to hear, and we're going to record this so you know we have exactly what your concerns are, what questions. So we're going to be, Nick is ready, and other staff members are ready, and I'm ready, and Mayor D Dixon, and other staff are ready. So let's begin, because we don't have much time. We want to go through it. So Nick, it's all yours now. Questions, sh you, you know, you have tho those question cards. If you have it, please just wave it so one of my staff is going to collect that and we're going to go through it. Thank you. Good morning. I'm just going to get the presentation back on track here. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm just going to try to get the. Can you hear me now? Thank you. All right, I'm just going to get the presentation back on track. It looks like we, we skipped ahead here. OK, <clears throat> first I'd just like to uh, thank Vice Chair Steele and Mayor Dixon for the invitation to come speak today. Um, again, my name is Nick Gaskins. I'm the manager of Access and Noise for John Wayne Airport. Uh, today. I'm going to be going over uh, the regulatory structure of the airport. I understand there are people that are aware of it, but there's a quite a few more people here today that may not be familiar with our program. Um, I'm also going to talk about noise level enforcement, and then I'll do a brief uh, departure flight path overview for the Newport Back Bay. And can you hear me okay still? Yeah. No? Okay. I'm not sure how to work this, so if somebody could. Thank you. <coughs> there. Okay, um, as Mayor Dixon mentioned, she gave a, a brief overview. Um, there are three regulatory documents uh, for the airport. There's a 1985 settlement agreement, which consists of uh, four signatories. It's the city of Newport Beach, the county of Orange, and two uh, community groups, Airport Working Group and Stop Polluting Our Newport. Um, within the uh, settlement agreement, we have the 10.8 million passenger cap, we have the daily departure uh, limits, and we have the noise limits. Uh, beneath that, you'll see the Phase Two Commercial Airline Access Plan and Regulation, as we refer to it as the Access Plan. This is the rules <coughs> and penalties for the air carriers. Um, and then following that is the General Aviation Noise Ordinance, or GANO. Uh, this pertains to GA operations, hours of operations, and max noise limits. Um, <coughs> also, we have Airport Noise and Capacity Act, ANCA. We are grandfathered, our, our restrictions being that they were implemented pre-1990, our restrictions have been grandfathered. For those that aren't familiar with uh, the noise monitor locations, we do have 10 regulatory noise monitor locations. We have seven down the back bay, and then we have three to the north, Santa Ana, Irvine, Tustin, and Newport Beach. 
the next table here is our noise limits. As you can see, you have the 10 noise monitors, and then you have different categories uh, for commercial and general aviation. For commercial aviation, you can see class A and class E. That's based on the type of capacity that's allocated to them each year. Um, if you move further to, to the right, you see that general aviation is divided up by daytime hours and then nighttime hours. As far as noise level enforcement, um, it's a little bit different between commercial and general aviation. For commercial, it's based on a quarterly average for the airline and the aircraft type. Um, for example, a Boeing 737 for airline A has to stay beneath the limits for the quarter for that aircraft type. If they were to exceed the limits, they risk possible denial of use of the airport for that aircraft type and that noise class. The last violation was in 2006. Uh, moving into general aviation, it's a little bit different. It's based on single events. So say you're flying a Cessna 172, you depart today, you violate. If you violate three times within three years, that aircraft is denied use of the airport for three years. So these are very heavy uh, penalties that are associated um, with our regulations. Uh, just to give you a breakdown, uh, 2018, we had 147 violations. Um, 135 were first time violations. Uh, most of the time when pilots become aware that they violated, they do whatever it takes to correct that. And as you can see, they, they avoid it as much as possible to avoid a second or third. Um, <clears throat> as far as compliance, in 2018, we had over 222,000 GA operations, 147 violations. It's a 99.9% .9 compliance rate. So I just want to point that out. Okay, hours of operation. Uh, Curfew for commercial, um, it is for departures, it begins at 10 p.m. and it lifts at 7 a.m. except for Sundays, 8 a.m. It is the same for arrivals except uh, the start time is 11 p.m. Uh, air carriers can uh, request a curfew extension if they have any of those causes listed up there, weather, mechanical, ATC, or emergency, up to 30 minutes. So. Even though it might be 10 o'clock or 10.05 and you hear an aircraft go out that is commercial, they more than likely have had a curfew extension. If they did not, there is a monetary penalty that's associated with that and the noise office will issue that out. Now for general aviation operations, they have and they currently are operating 24-7. Um, they must adhere to those nighttime limits that we saw a few slides before, which are significantly lower. Okay, the last part of my presentation is just going to be a departure uh, flight track overview of the Newport Back Bay. So what we did is we chose August 2nd of 2016, 17, and 18, and we divided it up by GA jets, GA props, and then commercial jets. This is pre and post Metroplex. For those of you that may not be familiar with Metroplex, it was the FAA's proposal, redesign of the airspace, um, to improve the efficiency and safety of aircraft in flight. Um, with Metroplex, we expected concentrated flight paths. So as I go through the slides, you'll see that. So August 2nd, 2016, GA jets down the middle of the back bay. You will see deviations like you do here. That does happen due to ATC instruction or pilot deviation. Again, the airport doesn't control aircraft in flight. We have no authority over flight paths. Here you can also see the dispersion on both sides of the back bay and down by Balboa Island. August 2nd, 2017, this is post-Metroplex. You see a little bit more concentration right there, the brighter green. And moving into August 2nd of 2018, you can see it's a more concentrated path than the previous one. Again, this is post-Metroplex. Moving into GA props, there's a lot going on there. Um, as you can see, the props are going down the back bay. Um, they don't always depart to the southeast or the southwest. You also have that oval shape uh, of flight tracks to the east. That's the traffic pattern. August 2nd of 2017, not much change there. 
And again, the amount of activity varies day to day. It's not gonna be a set amount of GA operations. Moving into commercial jets, um, this is 2016 pre-Metroplex. You see that wide dispersion. At the bottom, you also see a little bit of a fork there over Balboa. August 2nd, 2017, this is post-Metroplex, but I wanna point out that there was an issue, a coding error with the departure procedure that the FAA identified. Um, you see that little split right there in the middle of the back bay. They were a little too far to the east and to the west. They did correct that by December of 2017, and as you'll see on the next slide, very concentrated, which was what was expected with Metroplex. The last slide is the stay departure, or as some people may know, the zigzag departure. This was the city of Newport Beach's recommendation to the FAA. Uh, the goal was to get the aircraft down the middle of the back bay. As you can see, it's hugging the water right there, going down the middle. Um, it's a three-point turn. Currently, there's only two carriers that are operating it. Um, for the airlines to implement this, it takes about 18 months of flight crew training. So we're not going to see this overnight where all carriers are now flying the state departure. It'll be a gradual process. And that concludes my portion. Any questions, comments? No, we're not, taking we're not you want to take that over there. We'll have about 10 minutes for this portion to answer, then we're going to go in the roll because we have a lot of information. Do, it, do I say the name of the person? You don't have to. Okay. <clears throat> what is being done to protect the children in the schools from JWA noise and pollution? Um, <laughs> well, this airport is unique. There's no other airport in this country that has the type of restrictions that John Wayne Airport has. Um, there are airports and communities out there that wish that they could have curfews, noise limits, a max number of passengers per year. And we are protected under ANCA, which we're, we're very lucky to have that as well. So that's what we're doing. We're enforcing and managing the settlement agreement access plan in Gano. I can't read them. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> this question here is in regards to flight paths appear to have changed. Um, the change that we've noticed is Metroplex and it's the concentration of the path which was widely publicized through uh, public forums, FAA outreach, the FAA did quite a bit of outreach um, with all areas throughout Southern California and the country. The Metroplex is taking place uh, in 21 different areas throughout the nation, not just Southern California. Can do some of the path, yeah. Uh, why can't the flight path be directed over commercial pro uh, properties as best as possible? Um, again, the FAA has jurisdiction over flight paths, departure paths. They have worked with communities, and as you can see, the city recommended the state departure, and they did implement that, which is over the water in the back bay. So they are doing and, and working with communities to find the best way to minimize the noise exposure.
you know what, it's all duplicate questions, so I'm just putting together th for the revenue, flight path, and how many flights are going out, it's all same questions, we, we are doing that, we are not actually screening any questions here. So you know what, if you, uh, we're gonna go through next presentations and we're gonna do the questions together. Okay, uh, can, you cannot hear me out there? Can you hear me? Okay, good. So, okay, let's um, go through the next presentations and we're gonna go through because there are a lot of questions here, but most of them are all duplicates. So we're gonna go through that. It's not screening. We are just trying to put it together so we don't have to answer hundreds of questions here. So, Nick, thank you very much. And then next uh, presentation, it's gonna be uh, Mr. Serafini. That I have to do this uh, disclaimer because uh, my attorney, uh, county attorney told me the airport lawyers asked me to let you know that this portion of the town hall is intended to serve as a listening session, but it is part of the formal CEQA public comment process. Your comments today cannot be considered as a part of formal CEQA public review because we already closed the public comment section. Comment process on the GAIP draft EIR, therefore there will be no formal or written responses provided by the airport to your comments and input that you provide today. And okay, next one is uh, Mr. Larry Serafini for the presentations. Thank you, Madam Supervisor and, and uh, Mayor. Oh, you gotta turn this thing up a little bit, I guess. Uh, all the material presented today is in the published draft EIR uh, 627 documents. They're available online at the airport website. So if you have any, whoops, go the right way here, questions, you should be able to find them there. Uh, a quick overview, the airport's about 500 acres. That's all everything within inside that red line. The airfield's about 400 acres. Our commercial aviation takes up about 77 of those acres. That's the uh, apron, the terminal buildings, and the uh, parking structures. Uh, general aviation takes about 73 acres. That's that yellow section you see on the, the picture up there. Our main runway is 5,700 feet, and our GA runway is 2,887 feet. Um, cool. Now I got more advice. Uh, given that overview, the remaining presentation will be centered on general aviation, uh, not the, the commercial aviation. As you can see, GA, although a relatively large percentage of the General, of G general Wayne Airport's operations, were the ninth busiest general aviation airport in the United States, it accounts for a very small portion of JWA's revenue. Uh, to put it into proportion, uh, the commercial airlines are about 42% of the revenue for the airport. Uh, and, and just, I'll run through them, through them real quick. Concessions are about 10%, parking's 29%. What am I missing here? Yes, um, general aviation, as it shows on the slide, Commercial aviation is about 42%, parking is 29, rent -a cars are 12, concessions are 10. And then there's a bunch of cats and dogs that make up a little difference that's in between. Okay, thank you. And for some reason, the slides up there don't match my slides. This is not the same, wait a minute, I gotta, I gotta get to find the slide, so. All right, at any rate, our general aviation uh, at John Wayne, uh, as you can see, are two full service, air, uh, uh, full service what we call fixed base operators. Uh, one in the southeast location, which you know, probably know as Atlantic. One in the northeast and uh, west side, which is common, you, know, you probably know as ACI Jet. 
We have two what's called limited service FBOs. Uh, they are, uh, uh, difference is that they don't sell fuel. That's the primary difference. Uh, Jay's Aircraft Maintenance on the uh, west side and Martin Aviation just north of them on the west side. Uh, our hangers and tie downs, uh, we have three different uh, sources for that. Two of them are uh, contract. One is the executive hangers, and again, which is T hangers. Uh, South Coast Associates, which is box hangers. And the County of Orange operates a small one hanger and a uh, number of the, well, all the tie downs. Uh, give you a quick idea of what kind of things happen in our general aviation community. Um, we have aircraft charter, and I want to, this question keeps coming up with lots of people. Aircraft charter, in the case of the GA, does not include regularly scheduled service type airlines like Jet Suite X. They fall under the commercial side of the house. So their flights and their passengers are counted as part of the access plan numbers. Uh, we also, of course, have aircraft handling support, uh, aircraft maintenance, storage, as we've kind of discussed a little bit already. Um, we have flight schools, uh, and we, you know, which includes training of pilots and uh, the rental of aircraft. And as you'd expect, uh, each of the FBOs uh, can contract for ground transportation and they're parking for their uh, customers. I think this slide's pretty self-explanatory, so I try not to read it all to you. But um, the, Basically, what we tried to do is a comprehensive study of, of, the, of the airport. We haven't done it on those 73 acres, that, or 77 acres, 73 acres, that's GA, since 1990. Most of those facilities are pretty old. Uh, so I've been at the airport uh, pushing 26 years, and most of them predate me. Um, so that, that's, so, and some are being held together by bailing wire and chewing gum. The need for uh, compliance with FAA requirements related to proximity of buildings, roads. We have a couple of uh, areas that are not in complete compliance with uh, the standards, uh, so we'd like to correct those. A uh, number of general aviation related long-term leases that expire, I think that was mentioned by the, by the mayor or the supervisor, uh, we basically had to do some short-term extensions and some of them will still probably go to month to month while we finalize this plan. Um, and again, the biggest one is that general aviation has changed since uh, the beginning of the Wright Brothers uh, and it changes every day. Uh, years ago, uh, the aircraft that you normally would be looking at were things like little Piper Cubs, Lancers, you know, the Cessna 152s, good old Stinson 108s, anybody who's in the aviation bugs that look like that plane. Uh, I personally started to learn on a Grumman Tiger, uh, but those planes are, you know, far and few between today. Uh, in general, those aircraft had wingspans all less than 35 feet, and most of them more in the 30 to 35 range, so the lower end of that. Today's fleet is considerably different. The plane you see up there is a uh, Cirrus. The Cirrus has a, well, by the way, the Cirrus accounts for 24% of the total sales of general aviation aircraft of all types in this past year, 2018. So it's a pretty popular plane. It has a wingspan of 38 feet 4 inches. Um, it doesn't fit in a 40-foot hangar. And all of our hangars, of course, are 40-foot hangars because they were based on those older aircraft. I, I, Pam, I... Although the town hall is not part of the CEQA process, this town hall is part of the GAIP process as a total. Because again, the airport, is, as it was expressed before, is a, you know owned by the County of Orange. Great. Um, that better. So, I, so basically when we started the process, and the, it, which ends in the Board of Supervisors deciding what they want to do with the general aviation portion of the airport, we looked at the stakeholders. Uh, existing aviation tenants, of course, uh, looking at what the future of those tenants may look like. Uh, we looked at commercial aviation interests in general. 
We had meetings with the uh, community uh, early in the process, uh, which have been described already at the beginning, and we had uh, discussion with all of our government regulators. Some of the key issues we identified in the uh, process was, the, as they show up here on the, on the, the, the slide, um, the biggest issue is always balancing of the uses. We have limited space and we have a lot of demands for it. So the question always can, went back to, uh, you can't solve everybody's problem. You can only solve some of them, well, all of them a little bit. So those were kind of the, the, the competing interests, as you can see there. Uh, again, we talked to all those stakeholders to look at, you know, what are the impacts of, of doing that balance. Often asked question, uh, the next couple ones that are up here is, we've heard a lot about, well, general aviation security. Uh, uh, how come we have so much security on, on commercial, you know, I gotta show my ID, I gotta go through the process. You know, what's the security on, on general aviation? So I, I threw this in here just so you, you kinda know what it is. Uh, again, it's, it's regulated um, by the uh, Transportation Security Administration, uh, and it's completely under the purview of, of the uh, TSA. Uh, the entire airport, as a matter of fact, operates under a security plan that's approved by the TSA and conforms to their requirements. That includes all of our FBOs. So I, there's kind of a list of the things that the FBOs are required to, to do. Um, in particular, I, I put the second one in there to give you a better idea of what happens with those flights that are um, regularly scheduled out of uh, one of the FBOs. Um, another question that kept arising that we've heard a lot about, and some of these are from the comments from the uh, GAI, uh, GAI uh, the EIR, excuse me, um, is a confusion between what is a GAF and what's a GA terminal. Um, pretty much every FBO has a general aviation terminal as part of their facility to accommodate their customers. Uh, this happens to be ACI jets. Uh, a GAF is the technical term that the CBP uses for a federal facility for clearing customs, immigration, and all those good things. Uh, currently, we do not have that at John Wayne, but we do have lots of general aviation terminals. Uh, as part of the plan, it requires each of the FBOs to have a general aviation terminal of some kind, but only one of them it w could have a GAF, and maybe none, it'd be up to them. It's something they have to negotiate with CBP as part of their lease uh, arrangement. Um, general aviation improvement program uh, planning process, gonna kind of run through it real quick. Again, we consulted with uh, all the GA users because they're, they're the ones that are involved, um, primarily on the field side of it. Document existing facilities, the way you do any plan is you look at what you have compare it against what you need, and then either build the additional or tear down what you don't need. So it's kind of building that piece. And the big part of that, of course, is developing a GA forecast. Uh, some of the slides I'm gonna show you in a minute, I'll show you how hard some of that, that can be. But, but again, you have to have kind of a forecast, what's the future look like? Uh, then we prepared preliminary drawings to, to match those uh, possibilities. Uh, we conducted a, the CEQA review process, which is public scoping, which we were involved in, and identifying alternatives that mitigate or lessen the impacts and, and identify all those impacts. So th those all occurred. We also uh, conducted a financial feasibility study to make sure that we could actually pay for whatever comes out of this. Um, this slide gives you a quick idea of uh, what's happened with pilots in the United States over the last few years. Um, it kind of give you a little bit of a flavor of what's happening with general aviation in general. Uh, again, you can see that although the, there's little ups and downs, the pilots uh, in general on the general aviation side, the GA pilots, private pilots, have uh, declined fairly significantly over the, the years. The other piece of that is, so has the number of planes that are based at John Wayne over the years. Uh, this is going from 1997 up through 2016, which is our base year for the EIR. Uh, you can see that our based aircraft went from 500, or ex well, let's just total from 595 down to 481, almost a 20% decrease in the number of general aviation aircraft. 
as you can see from the slide, the vast majority of that was in single engine jets, or single engine uh, piston aircraft, excuse me, where jets have in, increased during that same uh, time period. Give you an idea of some of the range that you're looking at to in, in involved in that forecasting. Uh, you see a typical uh, single engine prop up in the upper left. Uh, it happens to be a Cessna 172. Um, on the right of it uh, is King Air, twin engine turboprop, and below, of course, a helicopter. And I, one of the other things to note about this slide is <clears throat> sometimes when we talk about twin engine prop, that includes both piston and turbine because the tower doesn't distinguish between the two when they do operations. And we have a similar issue with the single engine. Sometimes it's at 172 and sometimes it's a Plotius that's a turboprop aircraft, but they don't distinguish between the two. They distinguish between single engine prop or sing, uh, prop, single engine or single and double and twin props. So that's kind of something that comes up in your statistics. As you go through, through these slides, they don't always add up properly. Folks, we've, we've asked politely, we know you're here, and, you, and, and this has been put on for your benefit. We ask you to please have decorum. You're going to be able to have all of your questions answered later. No, we're not going to recognize you from the podium. It's not a waste of your time. This is information for you, and when it gets done, then you'll be able to answer all your questions. Thank you. If you can't have decorum, we can ask folks to ask you to step outside. But please, for the rest of everybody else who's well-behaved, please sit down and be quiet. Thank you. Let me just say, please, 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 please. <laughs> All right. Let's, we want to just get through the facts so we know what the General Aviation Improvement Program is all about. And Mr. Serafini is explaining just the facts. So yeah, this is the basis for information. So it's all just facts. So this is what he's presenting. So we'll, after he concludes, then we're going to turn it over to the questions that you've submitted and comments as well. Okay. Yeah. I will try to go a lot faster here. Uh, just quickly show you that the uh, jets come in all varieties. Uh, you have a G5, uh, G4 there and also a, an Eclipse. So they little, some of the smaller jets are smaller than some of our air, uh, uh, piston aircraft, if you will. Um, a quick overview of the actual environmental process. Um, I'm going to try and get through these slides as quickly as I can for you, so I'm not going to read them to you. Uh, the project objectives are kind of important. This is, this is the reason we did this project. So all the stuff that you're going to see is because of these issues, is to try to hit these objectives. So you want to keep these in mind throughout the rest of this presentation and through your comments. We, you know, we really are, number one, to enhance safety and security at the airport, uh, utilize our land the most efficiently as we can, uh, enhance our cap uh, compatibility between uh, general aviation and our commercial operations. Uh, again, that's part of the safety issues. Uh, to embrace flexibility to allow for technology change, as you've seen, aircraft have changed drastically over the years. They maximize the econ economic and self-sustaining revenue producing facilities We're required to be self-sufficient. We don't use tax dollars. Uh, and then, of course, to access the existing infrastructure as best we can. These are our I think you'll see them in a minute, so we'll get back to them. Um, again, we looked at a number of alternatives as to, uh, and again, CEQA requires that we look at a range of alternatives uh, with an eye to achieve a project, a project objectives while minimizing and or mitigating the project's environmental impacts. Uh, so these are the, the projects we looked at, and we'll describe them a little more fully here in a minute. So basically, they, they go from a two FBO, a three FBO, and a fixed-based operator. That's the people that actually manage the aircraft. So quickly, what, what they all entail. Um, the two alternatives uh, are the, the first two, the proposed project and alternative one, were looked at in uh, what's called an equal level of detail. So we examined both of those with all of the impacts that, that would come out, noise, uh, air pollution, the whole nine yards, everything that was involved totally for those two. The other uh, uh, alternative two and alternative three and, uh, were at a lesser 
level of, of uh, examination in the, in the EIR. So some of the common things between those, all those uh, uh, activities, uh, they're and you kind of listen there, they all have those, those items in order to meet the uh, original objectives of the project. So the other project alternatives, two and three, uh, again, they, they were a little bit less. It's two, uh, uh, and alternative two is just two full service FBOs on the uh, east side of the airport. Um, and alternative three was just fix the things that are not in full conformance with the uh, FAA standards. No project course is what you'd expect to be just doing nothing. Uh, a quick rundown of kind of what, how these compare. This is the proposed project. Um, again, we're looking at this is a busy slide, and I think for, to get to the point as all of you'd like, I think, if you look at the bottom line, the 2026, the numbers that you have at the bottom are comparing the actual aircraft we have here today against what we would have in 2026 based upon the, uh, um, air, the, the capacity that we'd have. So basically, it's 100 in single engines, 141 less planes. Multi-engine props, it's two less. Fixed wing uh, turbo, it's four more. Turbo jets, it's seven more. Helicopters, it stays the same. So it's a reduction in aircraft, about 128 aircraft. These are based aircraft at the airport. Alternative one, similarly, it shows approximately the same across. To give a little bit of context to this, um, when you look at 2026, the unconstrained baseline forecast we did is kind of, you know, you look at what would happen if you didn't have to worry about facilities constraints. Um, the, those numbers that you see uh, at capacity for 2026 in this alternative would only, would meet 54% of the single engine, 111% of the, the multis, 81% of the turboprops, 85% of the jets, and 77% of the helicopters. So, it just to emphasize none of these alternatives meet all of the demand that we that, that's out there in the uh, uh, marketplace. Again, alternative two, you see similar numbers. Alternative three, which is just fix the uh, non-conformances that, uh, that exist on the airfield today. Um, again, that bottom line gives you the best uh, indicator of what it, what it means, uh, and just put in percentages again, uh, under this alternative, we would service 115% of the single engine piston aircraft, 130% of the multi-engine piston, 59% of the turbos, and 65% of the jets that we'd, we'd see as demand. Again, uh, the no project, you have similar numbers at the bottom. Uh, I should emphasize that uh, although we always it, you know, look at the no project, even if, you know, if that would be selected then, we would most likely look at um, future projects and with future uh, work to uh, correct the uh, current non-standard uh, items on the airfield. Um, give you a quick look at what those operations from, and, and again, these operations are not just the based aircraft. This is also itinerant, everything that flies through the airport, if you will. Um, and again, I think Nick mentioned that uh, this past year we had 222,280 GA operations. Um, so we actually are operating considerably more operations in our current configuration than in any of the uh, but then the proposed project or any of the alternatives. The impact areas that we evaluated uh, in the program are the uh, ones that are always evaluated, I guess. Uh, aesthetics, air quality, cultural science resource, scientific resources, the greenhouse. Ones that, that really come, of course, to you as the uh, noise, uh, land use, uh, and uh, the uh, air and, and greenhouse gases, and all those were identified and studied in depth in the EIR. One of the other ones that I, I kind of glossed over there at the end is a thing called cumulative impacts. It becomes kind of important that you look at, you know, all the other things that happen at the airport in conjunction with this project. So you still have commercial aviation, 
as well as the general aviation. So cumulative puts all that together in, in part of the analysis. So noise. Um, kind of as one would expect, uh, the G8 don't really contribute much to the noise. Um, <laughs> the, the, the proposed the proposed project showed an increase in noise of 0 0.15 dB. The alternative one showed an increase in noise of 0 0.17. For the purpose of CEQA, the uh, threshold for a significant impact for noise is 1.5 dB. Um, it's interesting that although it, noise is not a significant impact, uh, it results in a significant... I, I'm talking about under CEQA. I'm not disagreeing, it may be an impact for you, I just, under CEQA it's not a significant impact. Un, it does result in a land use and planning impact off airport in that uh, in part of the area where we did uh, uh, noise mitigation in the past, we did not, not every house was willing to get uh, their, the noise mitigation program. Uh, and as part of this process, we, we identified homes in that area that would now again be impacted um, by, the, by the noise. So th they would require uh, uh, most likely a, a similar, we, our pro noise program, mitigation program still exists. So we would actually go and have to noise mitigate those houses or offer them the opportunity to anyway. Again, it's three houses. So the, com the comments um, uh, for the EIR are available, will be available on our website on the 9th, the, uh, all the response to comments. So if, if you want to see all the 300 and the responses to them, they're available, they will be available next week on the website. Um, and basically the comment period is currently closed for the purpose of the EIR and the comments that are involved today will be part of the supervisor's uh, thought process on what she wants to do for the approving of the project or what project she wants to approve. Um, there's additional opportunities for you to put your comments forward or be heard. I encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities being provided by uh, the supervisor today and uh, any of these other you know, opportunities also. Uh, that's the next step in the process is for the board to make its decision. This work, well, at this point I'm going to turn it back over to Supervisor. Uh, Billy, I need a step to answer all these questions. Okay, good. Are you ready to answer this? I read, um, you know what? Um, People, people think that you know I'm kind of screening, so I'm gonna go through all these questions as much as we can, and if we cannot ans answer, I mean we cannot go through these questions, then you know what we're gonna stay behind, so you can come to us, and we have city council members, we have uh, airport commissioner, and then we have all the staff here that from the airport, so we're gonna answer that. So let me go through these questions, and then I'm gonna ask our staff to answer it. It's expanded number of flights, not expansion. We are not expanding it, we showed the numbers, so Billy. So uh, I think when the supervisor was uh, discussing expansion, she was referring to physical expansion, extending the runway, moving beyond the footprint. Um, so that's not happening, just to be very clear. We're not proposing anything like that. Um, aircraft activity will increase at the airport both general aviation and commercial over time. We know that. Okay. No, you hold on to it. How many, po how many posts? Uh, 10. Just let the answer, no, the answer, that's much 
Just sit down, Jenna. Nancy, how many po post 10 p.m. How? How many post 10 p.m. flights this year? How many were sanctioned? What? How many were sanctioned? How is done with money? You know, we try to answer your questions, and then we are. That's the reason we are here. And you know, if you start screaming, it's very hard to ask questions. I have these many questions that I have to go through. As much as we're gonna, we're gonna do whatever we can here, and we're gonna stay here. So please stop shouting, and let's try to answer this. So how many post 10 p.m. flights this year, and how many were sanctioned, and how it's done, and then if we can tell about the curfew of general aviation at the same time, that's gonna be really helpful. Okay, I don't have the number of uh, post 10 o'clock flights, but the curfew um, expansion stuff or curfew extension uh, is on our website, so please go to our website and you can get that answer. Nick, come on out. We have the, okay. We are not extending the time, there's a curfew and during the curfew, this is all FA matter that, you know what, as soon as airplane take off, okay, so what happened is that noise, limited noise, uh, noise limitation during the curfew hours for general aviation. That's what FAA's regulation says. That has nothing to do with the county at the, and the airport. So you wanna know more details, then you know, we're gonna come back to you. How many small general aviation planes land at JWA? What's the number of small general aviation planes land at JWA? While Larry looks for that, I will tell you that about 65 to 70 percent of all the operations, both takeoffs and landings, are generated by general aviation, uh, be that small general aviation or jet traffic. Um, we're trying to get the breakdown for you right now. Um, again, back to the, uh, I'm using 2016 because that's the last day we had data for the, for the program. Uh, for the single engine, uh, well, piston aircraft in general, single engine or turbine, uh, there was 147,000 operations. Uh, so you can basically figure an operation is landing or a takeoff, so half of that's the number that, that landed at John Wayne. Uh, in the turbine aircraft uh, arena, that's be the, uh, again, the Platyses and, and primarily and the uh, uh, King Airs was 9,800. So again, about half of that, so about uh, 4,800, uh, 4, 4,900. Um, in the jet arena, the, the turbines, there was 31,800 uh, in that year, so about 15,000 and change. Uh, helicopters, 3,900, so about half of that, about 2,000 helicopter takeoffs and, and landings. Thank you. Will the new proposals for GA add to more flights out of the curfew? Just y yes or no questions. I, I think the, 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 the people are talking about the curfew, and again, the curfew pertains to commercial aircraft. The way that night, and that doesn't change. That's a part of the settlement agreement, and that, change, that stays. For general aviation, it's, it's not in the truest sense a curfew. It's a more strict requirement for noise at night. It, without, your slide's still up here? I could find it maybe? Okay, just keep. Again, once they're off the ground, they're, they're not under the control of the airport. Has the FAA changed the noise abatement? Steep takeoff, it seems they are flying lower and more gradually into their accent path. 
So it's important to understand that um, the steep de departure, the NADP 1 or 2, is dictated by the individual airline uh, given the type of aircraft they're flying. So all we say is you must meet the noise requirements at each one of the sensors. And you saw the slide that said what that was at each sensor. No, so please, sir. Please, sir, I, I understand your point. Um, so if an airplane like a NEO or a MAX or something quiet can meet the noise requirements at each one of the sensors doing a standard takeoff, they're permitted to do that and they can do that, and many do do that. Those that are a little bit louder and can't make the noise restrictions at each of the sensors will do the NADP 1 or 2. What, sir? What is being done to revise the collection of airplane noise data so it is not skewed in favor of the airlines? Noise violations are aggregated by all airlines over a three month period. This method dilutes the actual number of violations. Okay, as far as the data itself, I can guarantee you it's not skewed. Um, we have one of the most sophisticated uh, airport noise and operations management systems uh, used by airports like LAWA, Port Authority of New York, San Francisco. Um, I can tell you that this office, the Access and Noise Office, goes through each noise event to make sure it's not contaminated or it should be associated with an event. So as far as skewed data, that is not true. The, a friend in Huntington Beach has flights from Long Beach all night that general aviation include Amazon type deliveries. This is actually from the resident of Newport Beach. I don't even. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the, the question is asking, but general aviation is the, the, inc uh, the entire gamut of non-commercial aviation. So it would include things like cargo, um, non-airline cargo, uh, let me restate that. So if it isn't on UPS or FedEx and if it's not in the belly of, of an aircraft and it's being carried by a non-commercial aircraft, that's considered general aviation. So I hope I got close to answering that question. Why not airlines not using the takeoff quick altitude gain as they used to? I think this I, I, is the I think it's a repeat question. Are you aware that commercial aircraft avoid the back bay noise moni monitoring stations by flying south over Corona del Mar and Camio Shores? I mean, clearly, if you looked at the departure path overview that I presented, they're going down the back bay and they're flying over monitor seven as they're supposed to. And with the state departure, they're following the, the, the back bay perfectly. So the so for the claim that they're avoiding the monitors, the, the data doesn't say that. 50, could you, um, yeah, I think to, yeah. 15 years ago, the departure prop was right to the seal beach. You know what, it's hard to read. Why aren't, yeah. VOR, why on general aviation craft doing it now? I, I think that's an FAA question. We, we don't control those aircraft. Are they here? Oh. The we have a FAA attorney here, but not FAA. We requested to ask FAA to come, and they didn't come. So you cannot ask any questions. It's very hard to read this uh, handwritten note. Flight path appear to have changed, and why and how do we undo these changes? This is another FAA question. Could you? Um, I, I think I covered that question, but there has been a difference as expected with Metroplex, the concentrated paths. So there was more dispersion before Metroplex if you were in that location where the concentrate, concentrated path occurred, you're gonna have more frequency. It's not that the path shifted. Um, clearly, 2016 to 2018, they're, all, they're in the back bay. 
as far as making any changes, again, the FAA has sole jurisdiction over air airspace matters, altitude, altitude, and flight paths. How many commercial flights were given time, curfew extensions, number, and percent? Okay, so every month we post our curfew, uh, any operations that go beyond curfew and whether or not they received an extension or if they, they violated, they didn't go out with a curfew extension. So if you visit the website, as uh, Airport Director Rondonella mentioned, it will have a list monthly of operations, commercial operations that occurred after 10 p.m. for departure or 11 p.m. for arrival. Um, as far as the process, it's, it's a pretty extensive process. They have to get approval through airport ops, uh, whether or not it has to be one of those four reasons. Then after that, they have to submit a curfew report detailing the operation, why it occurred. And then after that, they have to provide supporting documentation, whether it's an ATC log, weather log, proving that the delay did occur. And as far as the number, I don't have that on me. Um, each month, possibly two to three that actually violated. There are months where none of them violate. They actually get a curfew extension, the correct process to go through. Okay, what is uh, it, uh, this? Uh, I see a lot of this. What is the total revenue from general aviation to the county at present? Well, I can tell you that it's about 4% of our, the airport's total revenues comes from general aviation. That's big, small, all of it. Um, the question may be asking about tax increment from the based aircraft to the county, um, and I don't have that number. I, I apologize. Uh, let, I'm, let me, I'm going to take over a couple of the questions that uh, relate to some of our process and also the G, uh, general aviation the flight path dictated for general aviation. Can general aviation fly anywhere that pilots and the tower flight path set up? What will be, will that change in any way or are they free to fly any path they want? What you're seeing right now, it, as far as any changes, I'm not aware of any changes. So what you're seeing now, regardless of a project, it, it'll represent what you're seeing on the screen there. So as far as GA operators, there are GA operators that do fly Metroplex procedures. But they, can GA, I guess, let me ask it another way. Can GA fly, fly any departure path? They can select a departure procedure, yes. There, there's multiple procedures. And so they're not, certainly not bound by the settlement agreement, but they're not bound by any, they could fly anywhere. They can. Um, in that one side where it was GA props, yeah. you saw they were going in a southeast, southwest. Yeah. But that's a pilot discretion, or is that FAA flight it's path? It's coordination. They request you know, a, a specific departure procedure, they f uh, file a flight plan, and then they're given that by the tower. I see. Um, a lot of that GA prop is visual flight rules, which is different from the instrument flight rules, the Metroplex procedures. Okay. We got the answer. Oh, here. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. On the revenue question. Oh, I have to move over to the, to the, oh. to the next slide. Please. Just get the total revenue. That's all you have to do. Oh, it's 132 million. Uh, uh, on what basis? A month or year? What? Year. General aviation revenue. A the general aviation revenues. Uh, in 2016, the, the uh, general aviation revenue to the airport was $4.5 million approximately. Uh, in that year, our total revenue was, I want to say, about $130 million. So okay. that's the 3.4% that you see in the uh, slide. All right. Uh, someone, I, I, I don't know who made this because I couldn't see the slide necessarily, but please confirm the 80% increase in jet activity. Was that statement made? It has occurred. It has occurred. In general aviation activity, 80%? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the slide that Larry showed uh, demonstrated an 80% increase in jet traffic uh, at John Wayne Airport over the past 12 years or so. So that has occurred, that's real. All right, but within any, uh, are there currently limits for general aviation today? No. No, okay. No. And in fact, you can rest assured whether there's a no project, there's an alternative three, um, jet, air, jet traffic, GA jet traffic will increase at John Wayne Airport, we just can't restrict it. Because? Because we're not allowed to. Because? 
because we have to take all takers um, unless uh, we have, a, you know, commercially we have a settlement agreement that predated ANCA. Um, when Congress decided that FAA should have jurisdiction over uh, limiting aircraft flights, over noise, there are no more settlement agreements. These don't e exist. What we have at John Wayne Airport is incredibly unique and it's something to preserve because you, nobody has it quite as stringent as we do. Um, general aviation, we just, we can't, we are, it's outside of our purview. If they want to fly in, we have to take them. Uh, however, wait, 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 wait. But this is the purpose of the general aviation program, give, giving us an opportunity to speak on a pro proposed project and its environmental limita or environmental impacts. So all, all the plan does is say how we want to develop going forward. Do we want to leave everything exactly as is? Do we want to fix the geometry? Ho hold on, folks. Do we want to fix the geometry of the airport and leave everything as is? Do we want to add a, another fixed base operator? A lot of questions, but the bottom line is if somebody wants to fly in here in a corporate jet, they can. Now, the problem is if they're based at another airport and they live or have business here, they're flying from that airport into John Wayne and then to wherever they're flying, back in, and then back to that airport that they're based on. Uh, based at. So that's four operations as opposed to two if we had the facilities to house them. All right, but I just want to go back to, please, just let's clarify what the issue is here. So you are saying, and this, uh, this is information that I'm learning for the first time, the city, neither the city nor the county can control general aviation at John Wayne Airport. We cannot stop an airplane from flying in. Okay, but what, please, I was just trying to clarify the issues. But what we as a city can do is recommend to the county on a proposed uh, project which will affect the number of planes taking on and landing. Uh, we, can, we as a city have made a statement to oppose or to support only alternative three, which allows the structures to be upgraded to conform with FAA regulations. And that is, is what we can do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, certainly we cannot have the facilities for the aircraft, um, but they can still fly in. They can still park on the on the ramp and fly out. And but fly it in. will be in effect, and and maybe this is desirable for the residents of Newport Beach, is to limit those facilities so that limits the operations. <laughs> Wave your hands! Wave your hands! Wave your hands! But, but, but just to be clear, what Mr. Rondella just said is that if the aircrafts are housed at another airport and the customer of that private plane wants to land or come to Newport Beach, they will touch down at John Wayne and go back out again. And it may be several flights when it would have been one had they been, had permission to house their operation here. So. W this is a position. This is a position that the city of New the city council has taken, uh, and in regards to the EIR, that is to study and analyze the environmental impacts. And we believe, we as a city believe, just upgrade the facilities to FAA standards, and they can fly and park their planes elsewhere. That is our position. <laughs> <Right? laughs> so. The, the community, the general aviation community uh, can work within that. They could still land at John Wayne, correct? Within the, within the curfew. Yeah. It, 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 shh, 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 shh. Again, whether we, we change the facilities, and, and by the way, we respect alternative three. If that's the decision, we're perfectly happy f with that. We're just trying to balance what you all have to endure with, with traffic coming in and out of John Wayne Airport with the business community, with the private aircraft owners, um, and their desire to have facilities that fit their airplanes. That's it. That's all we're doing. But they're going to, the point, this is the new information for myself. Those planes are still going to touch down and take off. Um, so, for example. Because we don't have the, I mean, that's, I guess that's, the, which is the lesser of two evils. That's a conundrum that we are facing. So anyway, I'm just, we're just clarifying these issues. Let me proceed back to the questions. Is there a possibility to limit the hours of operation for general aviation? It's outside of our purview. It, whose purview is it? Um, well, it would be FAA if they wanted to, and they, they don't do that anywhere. 
Uh, it, it's again, it goes back to the air. Uh, Anca. Yeah. The Anca. congressional law that limits and restricts and grandfathered in our settlement agreement. Okay. Um, we could all we could focus our energy to the FAA. That is that's certainly an outcome. It appears that the FAA is dictating conditions of the airport. How do here's a perfect follow up. How do we as citizens change the FAA dictates? <laughs> So, so I guess, I, I, I mean, it's not, it's not for you to answer. It's really our businesses with the FAA on specific relating to flight operations of general aviation. Yes. Okay. Did you want to say anything else? Go ahead. All right. Uh, does the city council support for uh, alternative three have any binding effect? Who in the end approves the GAIP? We have... The county, as I said earlier in my remarks, the county owns the airport. The FAA ha has their jurisdictions as well. We have communicated uh, to the Board of Supervisors and through our supervisor, Vice Chair uh, Michelle Steele, and that is precisely why we're having a town hall today because we have gone through this process and she, there she is, <laughs> she uh, wanted to hear from, our, from the residents, and this is her district, that how we feel. So we're all on the same side of trying to, to uh, do the right thing with regard to our recommendation, our position, the city of Newport Beach to the Board of Supervisors. So alternative three is our position, which again means uh, just retrofit the, the structures to be FAA compliant and leave it at that. So. That's, and thank you to Supervisor Steele for, for receiving this on behalf of the Board of Supervisors. But our work is not finished because we still need to communicate with the four other members of the, the Board of Supervisors. Did you want to make another comment? No, that's okay. Just go ahead. Um, why we often found that airplanes from, come from the ocean and take a slight north path for landing instead of departure. Just, uh, someone want to speak just to some, we've had a lot of, because of the weather conditions, uh, a lot of cra aircraft are landing over the Reverse ocean. Reverse flow? Yeah. So, so when they depart to the north and they're arriving over ocean, over Newport Beach, that happens about 5% uh, of our operations uh, are reverse flow. That has to do with the weather conditions. Uh, some of you may know when you're taking off in an aircraft, you want to take off into the prevailing wind. You never want to have a tailwind because you're not going to get that lift to go up. So when we have Santa Ana wind conditions, you're going to want to depart to the north because that's the direction that the, the, the wind is coming. Now, we get calls where people say, well, there's no wind, but winds aloft, winds at a higher altitude can also dictate if we go into reverse flow operations as well. Um, people often ask, why can't that just be the standard landing over the ocean and taking off east and, and Well, north? typically the water or the... the wind is coming from the ocean. And also you have to factor in, this is Southern California with all the operations going into LAX, Long Beach, Burbank, Ontario. If you were, if I was to run flight tracks of all traffic over flights, it would just be spaghetti. You wouldn't be able to see anything in a day's worth of flight tracks. So there's much more than just saying, let's just send them off to the north. Okay. Um, is it possible to spread the flight path distribution once the flight path leaves the back bay for general aviation? Can, they, if, can we communicate with the general aviation community to, become, to disperse more of the takeoffs? Uh, that, again, that's the FAA's jurisdiction. Once that aircraft becomes airborne, unless it's under our settlement agreement or the GANO, we don't have control over telling them you need to you know, vector a little bit further to the east or the west to cause dispersion. That would, that would fall under the FAA Could we? Is that something that we as a city can work directly with the general aviation community? Or the, and, the, and or the FAA? So a lot of airports have uh, community noise abatement um, procedures. They're all voluntary. Um, but certainly the, the, the community, uh, the city of Newport, uh, the county, um, could reach out to the general aviation community and ask for their voluntary compliance on a certain flight path. The problem is when you move uh, an aircraft path from one area to another, you just you just move the irritation, right? Well, but you're dispersing it. I mean, is this in Metroplex, as we all know, is just a one course, one flight path right down Main Street. Um, but it, uh, this is probably an important, significant point. I mean, we could, we as a city, could work directly with the aviation general aviation community to see if they're amenable to dispersing the flights. And we'd be happy to facilitate that. 
Okay, uh, that's, again, that's. Uh, how do residents appeal EIR report and open for comment? Who wants to take that? So um, th that period has, has come and gone. The EIR um, was reviewed, was, there was a public hearing, there was a comment period that was initially 45 days and then extended to 60 days. We took all those comments, the comment period closed, and then we're in the process of responding in a written document to each and every one of the comments that were, okay. what were made during that period. Um, that report is due in about a week. Date that uh, what happens? The Board of Supervisors on April 23rd, I believe, is going to be reviewing and voting on the draft EIR. Just one, just, just okay. two more questions. Sure, go ahead. What's the last noise monitor, Barboa Island? Question mark. Uh, so, here is the map. As you can see, monitor 7S down the back bay is the last monitor on the south side. It's located at the Newport Dunes Resort on a hill right there. Um, as far as Balboa or any other locations, what you see right here are our 10 regulatory monitors. If anybody wanted to put uh, a monitor, if the city proposed something like that, it would have no regulatory strength. It would just be for data. We wouldn't be able to say, this monitor is now here, it has a limit of 70 dB. It would just be for data. But these are regulatory where we can you know, impose the, the monetary penalties or possible banning of the aircraft. Okay, thank you. Just is there a limit on fees change to general aviation? Can we raise them? Okay, well we don't charge any, any fees. Okay, so I under, if I understand the question correctly, is uh, what are the fees f charged to general aviation and can we raise them? If the question is about violations, we don't charge fees to general aviation for violations. We give them three strikes and then we ban them for a period of three years if they um, exceed the uh, the vi the uh, noise uh, noise limits. Thank you. Um, so there aren't fees. We do charge the commercial airlines fees when they exceed uh, or violate the curfew. Um, and I do intend to bring um, a measure to the board to increase those dramatically. Uh, we really want to make sure that the the commercial aircraft um, are operating within our curfew hours and, and not violating our curfew. So we want to hurt them, hit them in the pocketbook. Okay, uh, some of these questions are general and I'll try to answer some and others can too and their comments mainly with some question. What about the air pollution coming down from the engines of every sized aircraft? Okay, wave your hands, wave your hands, wave your hands, wave your hands. Okay, we all care about that. I will say uh, Council Member Muldoon and Herdman and myself have been working as your representatives with the FAA in Washington over, over the past year and uh, there was an FAA reauthorization bill that was passed by Congress and signed by the President late fall that incorporates many of, or several of the provisions that Newport Beach was advocating for, and that is to, con that to include Newport Beach or John Wayne Airport and the radius around John Wayne Airports, and to six cities will be selected to do noise and air quality studies, and it is defined in the FAA reauthorization bill, so it's not law. So right now we are, as a city, we are working to get Newport Beach included in that uh, study. We have not heard any update. Have we, heard, we haven't heard any update. Uh, well, I, I, well, let me just answer this question uh, about the FAA, so as far as air pollution and um, that will be a definitive say. It's the first time any air pollution and noise studies have been authorized by the FAA, so that was really kind of a big win. Um, let, me not a let me not take any questions from the audience, but let me go to the next one. Why did a World War II prop airplane fly close to my house one Saturday at 9 p.m.? We are not a flight path. Um, Anyway, <laughs> I was, so, these, this is on the card. I mean, one of the purposes of the Access and Noise Office is to address these issues. So, for an example like that, it would be perfect to contact the ANO, Access and Noise Office, and we'll investigate it. We can grab the altitude data. I do want to point out we also have a public flight tracking system called Volans where you can actually go on as the public and you can track that flight to see how low it was. But if you want additional information as far as 
you know, what, why did they violate, you can definitely contact us. So would you repeat that contact on the noise, the aircraft noise office, repeat that again, how, what can people find okay. out? Okay, uh, it's the access to noise office, we refer to it as the ANO. Uh, we have a telephone number, which I think there are fact sheets out that have that number. Um, I can provide it to you or on the website. We also have an email address, noiseinfo.ocr.com. And so if anybody wants to find out what an airplane was doing at what hour, what time precisely, they can identify it on that they site. They can't, uh, well, on the public, the Volans public flight tracking system, yes. they can go on their own. But let's say they just want some assistance, they can contact the, the ANO, and okay. we can investigate it for them and get back to them. Um, okay. Oh, and it's in this uh, it blue sheet, too. There? The contact okay. information is in the... Thank you very... Correct. All right, thank you. So that's really good to know because I do know that a lot of people will contact me and other council members and say a plane's flying, and then you we go look at the charts and it maybe wasn't or it was over the correct flight path. So it's always good to check these things out. Um, why don't they fly over Jamboree or MacArthur? Um, it's the F that, again, is the FAA. Um, there was a question here related to the, oh, Grace, maybe you want to answer this. Please explain that to all of us the status of the HMMH study and any recommendations resulting from it. HMMH, do you, do you have any comment? Or David Wilson, do you have anything to say on that? Okay. So, hi, I'm Grace Leung. So we uh, have uh, HMMH under contract right now to be looking at uh, um, anal analyzing data so that we can work together. This is on a voluntary effort with the air carriers to see if there's um, some departure paths that they can fly that would help um, reduce um, the noise um, in their departure paths. So we wanted to do it in a data-based uh, manner, so we're continuing to work together with the air carriers with our HMMH um, um, data analysis together uh, through that. So that, that work continues right now. Um, yeah. HMMH is, um, they're a, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess there's, mm -hmm. they're an, uh, yeah, uh, aviation uh, analysis company. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're well known and well recognized um, with airports um, and with the air carriers. A lot of air carriers also utilize them. So it's a good way to go in and t talking and building a relationship with the air carriers that's data based versus more of an emotional based um, type of relationship that we want to build with the air carriers. Okay, just if there's confusion, I just want there uh, was a question here. Supervisor Steele says no expansion. Mayor Dixon says expansion of number of flights. Let's just be clear. The settlement agreement does mandate certain increases in the number of flights and passenger count uh, over the period of time for the settlement agreement. So that is in, that's just grandfathered in. There's no expansion proposed in the physical footprint of John Wayne Airport. That is, that is true. Uh, the general aviation alternatives do, does limit the total number of operations, which means takeoffs or landings, but it changes the mix. And that is what the mix of aircraft from the little Cessnas to the jet engines. And that is really what, while the expansion really doesn't happen, it's the changing of the mix from quieter little airplanes for single prop planes to jet engines, and that's really what <laughs> is, th that is, that is the expansion. Okay, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> so that is essentially expanding the jet uh, flights because of their changing the mix. Go ahead. So general aviations, there are two, three proposals that you already saw, and then we are tying uh, right now, capacity of tie down is 596 aircraft, and proposal one and two and three, actually one and two are 300, we're gonna show you the exact number, but alternative three is 592. So actually, it depends on that how you're gonna tie those down, and then you know what kind of hangars and box hangars is gonna be built. So that's what uh, proposals are there, so it's not expansion of that how many aircrafts are tied down? Um, here's a question. How does Newport benefit from more corporate jets? Um, <laughs> I, I think that's why we're all here. We're, um, but we could benefit if there are no rules, just to kind of summarize what we've learned this morning, if there are no limits on general aviation, if we can work with the general aviation community to 
mitigate, reduce the impacts on Newport Beach, that would be a good thing. So that's what we will try to continue to do. Um, these are, well, it didn't, this is, I'm trying to respect, I'm trying to respect the people that did fill out comment cards. Okay, um, I guess that's it on the comments. So that's all comments. You know what, this is, uh, okay, why don't the plane go higher on takeoff as in the point? It's in the past. This one, huh? Do you want to do yeah. that? Yeah. So. All right. Uh, Shall we sit down? Yeah. Well, well, okay. Try it so we can talk and everybody can hear. So what we are going to do, as I announced at the beginning, we're going to set up microphones. So staff, if you would assist, please, to set up, and then we can line up, and we'll spend the next 20 minutes uh, taking your questions, questions out, like, com excuse me, comments, not speeches. We want comments. Not questions, comments, comments only. So line up, and we'll we'll go through them. And staff, you might want to stand here. Uh, airport staff, John Wayne Airport staff, you might want to stand up here as well. No, we're gonna let them know. Okay. We're just you know, all them. these comments. It's gonna be one minute, and then we're gonna ask the staff to actually sit down and put those comments, put it together, so we are ready to answer or we can um, to respond. But Nancy. Let's uh, try to keep the noise level down so we could all hear the questions. And please, c comments. I keep saying questions. I mean to say comments. Remember, comments, comments, comments. So, quiet, please. Miss Alston, please. Well, I'm so glad that Mr. Rontanella came today, and I appreciate him being so frank because sometimes I don't think we get that direct answer. Uh, the problem with a lot of us is, as Mayor Dixon said, is substitution, not expansion. And you're taking out the airplanes that don't bother us. They don't bother us. Now, maybe there are one or two people in here who are bothered by some little mom and pop, but <laughs> you're trying to sell us on the idea that you are decreasing the number of planes, but what you're doing is bringing in the noisy, and the, according to uh, Monitor 5, which happens to be near my house, the commercial flights from Delta are quieter than the general aviation over, general aviation jets over a period of time. Okay? okay. All right, I'm gonna set my timer. One minute. Uh, you wanna go over here? Laura, go ahead. Good morning, my name is Laura Oatman. I'm a 43-year resident of Newport Beach and I'm the district director for US Congressman Harley Ruda, who has recently joined the Quiet Skies Caucus. He proudly represents our beautiful coastal Orange County from Seal Beach down to Laguna Niguel, including Newport Beach. In addition to the DC office, we have an Orange County office right here in Newport Beach, in fact, next door to John Wayne Airport. Uh, Congressman Ruda has explored the FAA Part 150 study and the FAA Community Roundtable with John Wayne Airport officials. He will be further briefed on noise mitigation plans later this month. Congressman Ruda agrees that corporate and on-demand charter jets should be subject to the same regulations as commercial aircraft, <laughs> including the takeoff and landing curfews. Like to its credit, John Wayne Airport has held regular public forums on noise, and we thank them for being transparent. But Congressman Ruda believes there's a middle ground to be struck between strengthening our Orange County economy and protecting the residents of Newport Beach. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. You know, thank you very much for coming because we need a lot of help from FAA, so you, we really need the Congressman's help. Thank you. And we've met with the congressman and he has been responsive. Okay, Julie, go ahead. Hi, um, my name is Julie Johnson. I'm a resident here. I guess the point that, that you're not making clear is these GA, GA changes are going to affect us because there's no curfew for the GA. And there's, there's companies like JetSuite that are on demand. Think about Uber in the sky. That's what they're trying to do with this program. They're trying to bring in these 
multiple passenger jets. You sign up online, you come, you buy a ticket. They're commercial under the guise of GA, and that's the loophole that the county has found. That's why they're trying to do this. Okay, and we don't switch. want it. Okay. Jet, jet. And you're, Please. it adds a Jess, million, there Jillian. are a million more people going to come in 2021 that you're not aware of. And then these GA jets, such as JetSmart, they are not even counted in our, in our yearly cap. So they're just extra planes all night long that'll be flying and not counted. Julie, let me no. make it, uh, let me uh, clarify this because jet suites, when they fly more than I two times a suite, suite. I didn't say jet suite, I said jet smart. We know okay. jet suite flies during the That's day. That's under the, uh, under the settlement yeah, agreement. Yeah, we got that. So. Okay. Jet. No, no, no. I, I misunderstood for jet suite because jet suite is actually under the settlement agreement, so it's a passenger. You know what? Okay, let's go. These are comments. All right. All right. Please, please. It will get answered in, during this process. Ronnie, do you want to make a comment? Yes, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Supervisor Steele, for coming here today and facing this crowd. <laughs> And uh, that's very brave of you. You did make a comment earlier that you promised us that there'd be no expansion while you have your seat. I'm very concerned about your fellow supervisors, and I hope you have some control over them when you step up and move forward in your aspirations. Uh, more importantly, for 10 years now, we've been hearing how the county owns the airport, but yet you continue to pass the buck to the FAA that it's their responsibility and we have no control. You are the owners of the airport. You have more control than you think you have. You should exercise it. You should utilize your leverage and you should not let them mandate how aircraft fly out of an airport you own. Thank you. I also want to thank all of you coming today, and I know it must be really a difficult, uncomfortable position to be in, so I appreciate what you've done. The big problems are, you do have courage to be here today, but we have a very, very weak component that is the most important. The FAA is being a coward. They are not here. They don't attend meetings. They don't hear what the, the public needs to have some control. A citizens need to have a voice. And we are constantly told you have a minute. Everybody else gets two hours to present this and statistics. I would like those exhibits. I've tried to film them, but can we get those as a handout? The PowerPoints, can we get them as a handout? There's so much information to absorb. But the bottom line is this. The FAA needs to take accountability for our health, for our environment. We have to smog our cars. We got to go every two years to do that, but the planes don't fall under any regulations. And we have angels here today trying to represent God. Unfortunately, God is FAA. And if we don't get to them, Thank we you. are never going to solve these problems. We're going to continue to have meetings, Thank and there you. will be no this results. Is, right, this FAA is. needs to come forward and help us have some solutions. Thank you. Sorry. After <laughs> All these PowerPoints are going to be on the website next week. What day exactly? After the meeting, board meeting? Yes, on Monday. Okay. Next. Hi, I'm Katitza Schmidt, and I've been a... 40 plus year resident of Newport Beach. And I was just wondering, California has a very strong and stringent EPA. Has the city or the county approached it from an environmental point of view? Upper Newport Bay is an estuary and a sanctuary for migrating birds. What are we doing and how will it affect them if there's night flights, additional flights as far as their habitat, their nesting? Um, you know, the, the plants that grow back there with the pollution, maybe that's also a way to approach this, and I don't know how we approach it from that aspect. Well, that's what the EIR, please, 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 please hold, please hold your comments. That's what the environmental impact uh, requirement is, and that's actually what we're here today and discussing the proposals and the EIR, the draft environmental impact report that I, uh, accompanies the proposal. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. so anyway, we're, uh, we're just taking comments. Let me. Go to the next one, please. Uh, Linda Kenzie, I live on Balboa Island. 
uh, someone in an earlier meeting said, if you build it, they will come. So I'm sure there will be a lot more jets in if you do go with either alternative one or two. I imagine everybody in this room would prefer alternative three or my own choice, no change at all. How much sway do you have, Ms. Steele, over the other supervisors? Can you get them to vote with you? I'm assuming you want to represent the people that you represent and, and choose what's best for us. Can you convince the other supervisors? I'm going to give you an email address that you guys are going to send out. Yes, mm -hmm. I'll talk to them, but you know what? I don't have control over any other mm -hmm. supervisors, except this is in my district, so I'm going to talk to them. But at the same time, I'm going to give you email address. To everybody send these emails that what you want and send to every supervisor. So that's going to really be thank, helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next over here, please. Hi there. Um, again, thank you, everybody, for being here. And I also want to say one thing, a couple things I noticed. First, with regard to uh, the gentlemen who gave their presentations from John Wayne Airport, they keep quoting 2016 numbers for GA, general aviation, and they're not talking about 2017, 2018, and January of 2019, where general aviation went up by over 400%, over 500%, over 500%, respectively, okay, by their own statistics and the report that Colleen Johnston, I think is her name, put out. So that's just one thing I noticed. It's a little annoying. But I also want to say to the mayor of Newport Beach and to uh, Ms. Steele, uh, what you guys get accomplished is going to impact all of us along the coast here. I'm from Laguna Niguel, and we are getting hammered by these small airplanes flying mm -hmm. low over our homes. So thank you both and anybody else who, who gets this done for Newport Beach. What's good for you guys, you deserve the best. I think it will also be good for us, too. Anyway, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Hi. I also want to thank you very much for being here. Um, I think one of the biggest concerns we have here in Newport Beach is the black soot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. Um, I think one of the biggest concerns we have is the black soot we find outside of our homes. And we know we are inhaling that. And we know how dangerous it is. It's documented. It's documented in many, many research papers. And we just speaking on behalf of people I know, we're, we're just concerned about the added number of jets that will be added to the concentrated trail going over our homes now, and just want to know how you're going to reconcile that. Thank you. Thank you. I did mention the FAA study, so we're allowing hard for that. Uh, over on this corner, please. Thank you very much, and it is a pleasure that you came here, and we, w we appreciate it. The question I have is I uh, support and have heard now the comments that I am worried not in the general aviation, not the mom and pop, not the corporate jets for like for Irvine Company that are here, nor the helicopters. I am concerned about the, the uh, other ones which you now, like the King Air and ACI and these that I understand can be housed here now or will be and that they you will be able to I can do it, my wife can do it, can we can buy tickets to go to New York, Paris, or wherever globally that they fly to from this aircraft housed here, and they should be scheduled like just like the other commercial aircraft, Southwest and those. These are sneaking in there, and it looks like they're going to be adding to that type of traffic, which um, I find is very, very 24-7 um, type air, yeah. small aircraft to you fly in. Actually, uh, right after the, uh, Barry, we can do this uh, after all the comment section is done. We're going to stay here, so, you know, Barry is going to give you an answer that your qu question Why can't you comments. keep it? I think right. that's of interest to everyone here is why 24-7. waiting here, we, uh, you know what, Barry, you want to come out and just make really <laughs> short then? So we, we spoke about the, the access plan and the settlement agreement, and one of the uh, unique things, one of the very unique things about that is if a, um, a charter operator flies more than twice a week on a scheduled basis, they become a commercial operator for our purposes, and they become part of the map cap, so their passengers count against the commercial activity, and they have to follow all of the same rules as a commercial carrier, including the, the um, curfew. Including the curfew, including and uh, the curfew. they cannot fly 24-7 like the other mom and pop can? Yes. I if they are scheduled more than t twice a week on a scheduled basis, 
they fall into their, all the commercial rules. And will you continue to add those number of passengers onto your Absolutely. total cap? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, let's go to this column, please. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Just two quick questions. Are other airports flying over Newport? And I know you t kind of touched on this. Why are we hearing more planes outside of the flight pattern uh, at different times than the scheduled 7 to 10, so whatever those times were? Well, that might know? be the general aviation. Right, yeah. Those yeah. are my questions. Yeah. All right, uh, next, please, well, comment. I let's not, I can't, let's okay, not I'm do the questions. Let's just make comments. I want to follow up on this gentleman's um, question. I think our concern is, is these new jets are uh, thinly disguised. They are basically, um, they're, they're basically scheduled flights. And, and to say that they're not scheduled flights because they don't publish them is not right. That's a loophole, and I think the county's ignoring that loophole, and it's going to be, it's going to increase jet traffic, period. But as I think I understood that they're now part, if they fly more than twice a week, they are commercial. No, oh. scheduled. Yeah. What, they're do, what they do is, is they make people members, and they become members, and then the members get the schedule, and the members can book their flights. So it is scheduled, it's just a loophole because it's not published. I need to learn more about this, so thank you. All right, thank you, next, please. Please, 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 please. Wave your hands. Okay, we'll get through a lot of these. Thank yes, sir. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, <clears throat> I moved here in uh, 1980 uh, when uh, the planes did go down the uh, back bay, uh, but I can tell you that uh, in the last year, those planes have been going over my house. I'm a good 1,000 yards north of uh, the bay, mm -hmm. and uh, I can hit a nine iron and hit one of those. Uh, that's how low they're flying. Mm -hmm. And that concerns me. Number two, um, the, the real estate values of the, of the homes in, in Newport Beach, in, in my section of the, uh, of the city, have gone down $1 million in, a, in the last year. Uh, and that's an economic impact that some mm -hmm. of us uh, may have to pay. And part of it is, is, I think, reflective of the fact that a lot of people don't want to live underneath an air, air, aircraft uh, pathway. And uh, I think last but not least, but um, <clears throat> the concerns that, that um, all of these flights that are being flown by regular pilots that, that could, I mean, the terrorist threat goes through my mind, especially when I can see the, the plane right over my home. And uh, I think there's going to be a crash here because this, this airport should have never been built. The, uh, the, the size of this airport today was never meant for Newport Beach. Okay. Uh, All right, come on. All right, thank you. It really wasn't. It should have been, Lago it should have been up in, in uh, Long I Beach. I know, but it should have, could have, would have. But anyway, that's where we are, unfortunately. But I agree with the economic issues. That's why I led that with my comment. Thank you. Lori. Hi. Um, I'm a 50-year resident of Newport. And Michelle, I thank you for being here today. Um, I'm of the mindset that when things happen, you follow the money. I want to know why this is happening, because I believe there is a, a, a money component that we are not really addressing. And I'd like to know where you were in 2015 and 2016 when the DEIR was proposed and approved at the county level for $3.3 million, and you said recommend. Where are you today on that position? That's what we want to know. All right. All right. That was, it's a question, but a comment. Unless you, we'll get it later. We'll get it later. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate being here. Appreciate you all being here. I have a couple comments. I live at uh, Six Bay Crest Court, uh, up uh, in the Back Bay, and my comment is really concerned. I think we need to really hammer on safety, pollution, health, and recently the city council approved a facility there for senior citizens. Uh, I can't imagine me being 95 100 years old, going to a facility where the little prop job airplanes are buzzing over your head and my community as well. 
and that's supposed to be my golden years, is sad. My health and the health of the community and the folks living around there and the noise is, is really, really something to focus on. And All I right. appreciate it if you would, uh, with one last breath of air, <laughs> encourage, because I keep being told there's nothing can be done to control the small prop airplanes. Please try to enlist their cooperation to quit thank flying you. right over residential right. airplanes. Right, we got to keep uh, moving. Thank uh, you, sir. Homes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Please, please stand in the line. All right. Afterwards, I'm staying here. All right, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, I've lived in Newport Beach since 1990, and I do appreciate all the work that's been done to help the airport um, stay as okay. um, small and oh, yes, mitigate up. our noise and things like that. But I've seen a lot of expansion since the time I've lived here, and I've noticed a lot more noise in my um, home, even when the windows are closed and the air conditioning is on. But so my comment to the board and to Mayor um, Dixon as well, is I would consider that you start looking for other areas to build another airport, even if it's just for general aviation or something like that. I mean, when they had the opportunity in El Toro, that was, that was abandoned. So I think, I think Newport Beach has done enough for this um, All right. Thank you. Situation. All right, um, I'm mindful that we have a group here, but we're going to do one more, one more question here, one more question, then we'll go outside, or we'll just stay till the last person. All right. Yes, fellow. Or are you? I'm sorry, it's over on this side. Uh, my name is Andrea Amar. I represent District Three in Costa Mesa, which includes a portion of the east side. And I know there were a number of Costa Mesa residents here. Um, I do want to let everyone know that our city council voted unanimously also to support Alternative 3. And we look forward to working with Congressman Ruta's office in particular and how we can enact FAA reform. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. My, my comment is directed to the audience, and that is please be aware that the city of Newport Beach has an aviation community or aviation committee. It's headed by... Councilman Jeff Herdman, they meet on a regular schedule. If you've signed up, if the city has your email or contact information, you will get an email advising you of the uh, date and place and time of the meeting. The subjects that are covered is everything we've dis discussed today and more. So if you want to be active, I encourage you to come to the aviation committee meetings. Thank you. And just to follow up on, gentlemen, and that's, thank you for the reminder. Uh, two things regarding our aviation. Is, is Mr. Herdman still here? Right there. Oh, there you are. Um, he is our chair of the Aviation Committee. It is certainly one of the most committees that we have in the city at this time. So it, your involvement is really key. Two points. The next meeting is April 23rd? 15th, excuse me, April 15th. Oh, my time is up. And. Um, we are currently restructuring the Aviation Committee and the application period is now? Until May 8th at noon. So any of you are interested in serving on the Aviation Committee, please uh, go to the city clerk website uh, or just type in AV or applications and you'll get the application form and turn them in and you could be considered to serve on the Aviation Committee. So we hope we have your involvement. Okay. I do want to take this moment and thank everyone. Thank Supervisor Steele. It's 12 o'clock. Well, it's, well, it's 12 o'clock, and we said that we'd end at 12 o'clock, but we'll stay. Okay, all right. Well, quickly, make a comment, please. <laughs> I'm Gary Boyles. I'm yes. a 31-year resident owner at 600 East Oceanfront. Over the years, the traffic of air has grown exponentially. However, rather than being frustrated and upset all the time, I've learned how to mitigate that myself. <laughs> I got myself a white noise machine. However, I cannot mitigate the residual soot that is constant, that has gotten worse exponentially over the years. And it is, it's black soot, it's a very fine soot, and it's over literally everything. You'd think that you live by the water, you're gonna have the cleanest air there is anywhere, but it's worse than if you go inland five miles. Okay, thank you, thank you. Ma'am, make your quick comment. Well, we wanna thank you too. <laughs> uh, this is not a question, this is a statement. 
I, um, several years ago, I brought papers to the city council to introduce them to a program, a congressional caucus called Quiet Skies. And no one paid much attention to it, I don't think. I encourage all of you to go on and look up Quiet Skies and, and be educated by it. They can help us. Uh, they are working on quiet skies throughout the United States. I uh, noticed the uh, new congressman's uh, person was here and indicated she had joined, uh, that he had joined the Quiet Sky Caucus. So I would support him, forget politics, let's get someone connected with the FAA. And this is the organization, this is the caucus that can help us uh, be more educated uh, through the FAA. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. By the way, I live on Ruby Avenue, Balboa Island, which is the pathway to the GPS out in the ocean. So you don't think we get every plane that goes over? We don't want these little uh, things. All right, right thank you. you. Sue. Hi, Sue Savory. I ran for Congress quite a couple times, 2014 and 2016, met with the FAA, learned only a congressman can do the job, so Harley Rudin needs to step up and he needs to go to the FAA. It's happened twice in this country and both times the local congressman got on board. Secondly, I'm trying to figure out what the objective of the Board of Supervisors is here and it seems to be to raise revenue. There are many ways to solve problems. One of the ways you can raise revenue is to not make it very comfortable there and raise the price of landing private and general aviation. Wave your hands, wave your hands. All you need to do is find out what you're projecting your profits to be from adding all of this mess. Newport Beach citizens do not want it. You want money. There's other ways to do it. Put it on the shoulders of general aviation and private planes who are flying in. Just make it so expensive that the needs are met. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. All right, quick. All right, no, we're trying to get through this quickly, so no more people stand in line, quick, and we'll get through real quickly. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien, and my comment question is in the very beginning, the gentleman from the airport said that that made the statement that air traffic will increase. And my question is like, why, why, whether commercial or general aviation, why does it have to increase? It's a, I think the airport is a public utility, not a for-profit entity that needs to grow and expand. So I'm just curious why that statement. Okay, that's a, I'll take that as a comment, but that's a good, good comment. Yes, Sue. Uh, my name is Sue Dvorak, and I think one thing people are not aware of is when um, planes, when people go to fly these uh, commercial and corporate jets, they, they are pre-approved by TSA ahead of time, but when they get on those general aviation jets, they do not have to pass through security. And there have been issues with other uh, jets just like this across the country. It's been reported on NBC News that they have been transporting drugs and guns. I'm not saying every airline does it, but it has happened and it can happen again. And if they're going to proceed with this, it seems to me, Mr. Rondanella, that these people should have to go through um, security in the main terminal the way everybody else does. And they don't need to create a new international terminal in the um, general aviation area. So I think people need to be aware of that. All right, thank you. Next, next speaker, Hi. next comment, please. I'm Michelle Lewandowski. I live on Balboa Island. I find it egregious that it, we haven't had a noise violation since 2006. Now I'm referring more to the uh, commercial aviation, but 2006, and we all know there's been an increase in noise. And I suspect if we collected data differently, we might have a different outcome in what we have so that you clearly know who's violating and who doesn't. When you average it over a three-month period, you're, going, you're not going to see the same thing than if you uh, counted each one and then maybe dealt with percentages. You might find that you had 30, 40 percent that were violating the noise violation versus uh, those that don't. And I think we need better accounting, and I understand that's the purview of the county, that how that information is 
um, the methodology for collecting it, not doing averages, but maybe percentages of violation would make a difference. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. All right, yes, sir. My name is Bill Anderson. I live on uh, the peninsula. My concern is safety. If a plane goes down, we all are hoping that it's going to be in the back bay. And maybe like a Captain Sullenberger can pull off a miracle and everybody walks away. However, we all know that something's going to happen someday, whether it be another airplane that runs into this one, uh, whether it be fuel starvation, whatever, a plane's going to come down. If it comes down on the peninsula right now, the flight path goes through three major roads, four alleyways, and it's going to take out at least eight homes, at least. 500 yards west of that route is a place called the Narrows. One road, one house on each side of that road. Very few kids that I know of up there. We have kids down where we live. Okay. Uh, All right. We've got to have a solution to that safety problem. Thank you so much. All right. Ma'am, next. No, next. No, no, oh. Nice stats. Oh. Oh. Close that. oh. Okay, well, all right. We've had a great discussion and information. This was level setting the facts of the General Aviation Agreement. Write your letters to the other members of the Board of Supervisors. You could go on the county website, get their addresses. <coughs> and I want to thank Supervisor Michelle, Vice Chair Michelle, for coming into Newport Beach and, and meeting with our residents. And it is a highly emotional topic, so I appreciate everyone's politeness and decorum. And thank you, Michelle, for giving up your Saturday, a peaceful Saturday, for meeting with our residents. Thank you very much, Mayor. You can send all these summit, and you can send the email out to response. It's very simple, response at OCGOP, OCGOB.com. And we're going to ask all the airport staff, and then my staff are staying here, so you can talk to individually if you want to ask any questions. Thank you very much on Saturday morning that you're all joining us. Thank you. <laughs>